And now back to the unholy goalie, the story of a young man whose mother wanted him to be a concert pianist, but whose dream was to be a hockey star. I spent my whole life at this piano. Well, now the other kids were outside playing shinny. What was I playing? <laughs> Well, I'm sick of it. Don't you understand? You are going to be a great concert pianist. I don't want to be a concert pianist. I want to be a hockey star. Hockey star? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Laugh. They laughed at all those kids who started off skating on frozen ponds. Frank Mahovlich, Bobby Hull, Mark Spitz. He's a swimmer. I know. The ice melted. <laughs> As you can see, Billy Tchaikovsky was under the thumb of the old lady. It was like having Punch Emily for a mother. <laughs> Finally, one day when Mrs. Tchaikovsky thought Billy was ready, she arranged an addition with the great concert agent, Boris Mishakos. My boy, your mother tells me that you have a talent for the piano. Not a talent, a genius. The great Boris Mishakos will decide who is the genius. <laughs> Go to the piano. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now play. Yes, sir. I would like to play the revolutionary etude by Chopin, Opus 10, Philadelphia Nothing. <laughs> oh, I got the sports page mixed up with the music. <laughs> Chopin's revolutionary etude. I haven't come to the tough part yet. That's where I cross my hands like Liberace. <laughs> I don't need to hear anymore. My boy, you are going to be the greatest concert pianist since Rubinstein. I am taking you under my wing. Forget it. I don't want that. What? He wants to be a hockey player. A hockey player? With the Toronto Maple Leafs. But I am offering you a world tour. I don't want that. You will be playing Mozart in Vienna, Debussy in Paris, Chopin in Warsaw. What could be better than that? Playing the Bruins in Boston. <laughs> you will walk the Toronto Maple Leafs when I offer you the highest pinnacle of the concert stage? You could be number one. Well, the Leafs could be number one. Buffalo will take them four straight. <laughs> I knew there was something kinky about him. He's a Sabre fan. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow with the contract. In the meantime, prank you. <laughs> you heard what he said? Prank <laughs> I don't want to. You will sit in this room and you will practice. And tomorrow you'll be on your way to the top. Nah. And then the name Tchaikovsky will mean something in the world of music. <laughs> The old lady's a flake. <laughs> I have to be born a musical genius? Why can't I have been just an ordinary, average Canadian boy, like Inga Hammerstrom? <laughs> Look at that. Johann Sebastian Bach. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Ludwig van Beethoven. They couldn't make the third line of the Cleveland Barons. <laughs> These are my heroes. Sittler, Salmi, <laughs> McDonald. Nobody's tougher than them, except maybe her. <laughs> the Tiger Williams of music. <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm not going to sign with that Mr. Michigas. I want to be a hockey player. Billy on the Maple Leafs. Oh, boy, I'd give anything for that. I'd even sell my soul. <laughs> Where did you come from? I come from a place that no man dares name. A place that strikes terror in the hearts of all men. Detroit? <laughs> I was just making a joke. Who are 
are you? I am known by many names. Satan, Mephistopheles, Beelzebub, Old Nick. But you can call me Mr. Brimstone. I love your card. Barbecued stationery. <laughs> Just where are you from? The bottomless pit. The hell you say? Right. <laughs> My boy, I wield infernal powers and I've come to help you. I can give you anything your heart desires. Anything my heart desires. <laughs> Just try me. Ah, uh, how about a pizza? <laughs> a pizza? You schlepped me all the way from the bottomless pit and asked me for a pizza? Ah! <laughs> Ask me for something difficult. Okay, how about a pizza with everything? <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> I was just an expression. Oh, this is hot. Natural. <laughs> oh. And now, young man, let us get down to business. Won't you please sit down? Thank you. Thank you. I understand you are willing to sell your soul in order to become a hockey player. You mean you can arrange that? Here are some of my satisfied clients. Joe Namath? O.J. Simpson. I made them all winners. Where were you when Russ Jackson needed you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, let me get this straight. You mean if I sell you my soul, I can get to be goalie of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Right. And no one will score on you ever. Wow. Well, what do I have to do? It's all in this contract. <laughs> <laughs> Just a simple little agreement between friends. <laughs> well, I'm Billy Tchaikovsky, hereafter known as the party of the first part. Oh, it's just your standard agreement with the devil. <laughs> Sign right here. Okay. <clears throat> just a moment. It's customary to sign in blood. Blood? That's right. I couldn't we use ketchup? It's just a sketch. <laughs> sign the contract. Here, use my pen. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Brimstone. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm worried. You know, selling my soul to be a hockey player. Maybe I should think it over. I told you to practice! <laughs> I thought it over. <laughs> hey, it's red. What's in this pen? Blood. Ah. <laughs> well, congratulations, my boy. You're on your way to becoming the greatest goalie in the world. Well, well what about my equipment? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> wow! I'll see you later. Boy, I'm a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that masked man? Tune in next time for the diabolically devilish denouement of the unholy goalie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, join us next time for the conclusion of the unholy goalie. Oh, good. We're going into overtime. <laughs> <laughs>
Additional writing, David Merovich. This is Bernard Cowan speaking.